In this video, I'll be sharing some tips and tricks for Adobe Photoshop that I've learned over the years. I have a cute cat image with no background, and I want to place it in the center of my document. However, using the mouse for precise positioning can be challenging at times. As you can see, the align tools are currently inactive and cannot be used. One solution is to click on the three dots and change the alignment from selection to canvas. Now the align tools become active. I'll turn them off and show you a faster method using shortcuts. Watch how quick this is. You can go to the select menu and choose all. I prefer using the shortcut Control plus A, which is easy to remember and works in various software and on Windows. This shortcut selects all the elements. Then you can align the image as you desire, whether it's in the center or on the sides. Finally, quickly deselect everything with Control plus D. I find this method to be very quick and I use it frequently. I have an Apple image that originally had a white background, which I removed to make it transparent. It looks fine on a white background, but when placed on a black background, if you zoom in, you can notice a faint one pixel white outline around it. If it were cut from a black background, you get a black contour, not white. One solution I've found is to go to the layer menu, then matting and choose defringe. Depending on your document size, I usually select one pixel. As you can see, it does a good job of addressing the issue. Let's undo that change and explore another option. From the layer menu, you can choose matting again. If you have a black contour, select remove black matte. In this case, since the issue is a white contour, I use remove white matte. This method can be quite useful. I have this pig image with a transparent background and sometimes it's helpful to create a selection in the shape of an element from your design. If you press and hold the control key while hovering over the layer thumbnail, you'll notice a small rectangular selection icon appears. By pressing control and clicking on the pig's thumbnail, you can create a selection of the pig's shape. With the selection active, you can create a new layer and fill it with a color. For example, you can choose black and then press Alt plus Backspace to fill the selection, followed by Control plus D to deselect it. This will give you a pig silhouette. Let's try it again. Create a selection, then create a new layer below the pig. Now go to Select, Modify, and choose Expand. In this case, I will expand it by 15 pixels to get a larger selection. After that, press Alt plus Backspace to fill it with white and you'll have a sticker design. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I wanna save this sticker as a PNG, but I don't want all that extra space around it. Using the crop tool for this can be time consuming. Instead, you can go to the image menu and click on trim. There, you'll find the option to trim based on transparency. When you click it, the document dimensions will adjust to fit your design perfectly. You also have more trimming options, such as choosing to trim only from the top. I have an image of a bird with a transparent background, and it appears to be perfectly cut out from the background. But how can you be sure? One way is to go to Effects and select Blending Options. Then click on Stroke and choose a visible color, like red. You can adjust the size to see what works best for highlighting any imperfections. Now, you can identify any small parts that shouldn't be there. If you create clip art for sale, your designs need to be flawless. You can use an eraser to remove these unwanted parts. Zoom in to look for dots and examine the contour along the edges to spot any irregularities. You should have an even contour all around the design. Once you're done, right click on the layer and choose Clear Layer Style to remove the stroke. I have a ball that I want to duplicate quickly. With the Move tool selected, if you press Alt, you'll see the cursor change into a double cursor. When you hold Alt, click, and then drag, you'll create a quick copy of the ball. To select the object you want to copy, use Control and click on the object, assuming you have Auto Select turned off. Then hold Alt, click, and drag. If you also hold Shift, you can drag it in a straight line. You'll notice it displays the distance in pixels if you have extras enabled. 
If you already have two objects and want the third to be spaced exactly like the previous ones, you can move it slowly until it shows a distance, such as 69 pixels in my case. This method helps you align objects perfectly, even without using a grid. I have a black flower silhouette on a white background, and I want to convert it into a custom vector shape. First, I need to make a selection of the flower. You can use your preferred method, but for this, I'll use the Select menu and choose Color Range. Using the eyedropper tool, I select the black color, or you can choose white and invert the selection later. Adjust the fuzziness to capture the entire design. When you press OK, you'll have the flower selected. If the flower had no background, you could have used Control plus click, as I did in tip 4. I'll create a new layer and hide the original for better visibility. Now choose any selection tool, right click on the selection and select Make Work Path. This creates a path with points and segments that you can adjust to fit your needs. Next, choose the Path Selection tool, select the path, right click and choose Define Custom Shape. Give it a name and press OK. The path is still there, you can hide it or delete it. Now go to the Paths window, click outside the work path, or select it and delete it. If you select the Custom Shape tool and go to Shapes, you'll see all your custom shapes. With the new one being the last, select it, choose the Shape option and a color, and start dragging to create the flower. Holding Shift while dragging maintains proportions and holding Alt and Shift creates a proportional shape from the cursor's center. You can use this vector shape for various designs, change its color easily, or adjust the points with the Direct Selection tool to create different variations. Sometimes you only need a specific part of an image on a new layer. To do this, use a selection tool to choose the part you want. In this example, I'll quickly draw a circle around the ball. Now pay attention to what happens when I press the shortcut, Control plus J, the selected part jumps onto a new layer. You can use this technique for various purposes, such as cutting objects out, borrowing a texture from a photo, and much more. Just select the part you need and use Control plus J and it will create a new layer with that selection. When you're editing images, it can be really useful to create a selection based on the luminosity of the image. You can do this by using the shortcut Control plus Alt plus Shift plus two. Um, this selection will include only the bright areas of the image. With this luminosity selection, you can make various adjustments like changing colors, adjusting brightness, contrast, or levels specifically for the bright parts. You can also create a new selection and then invert it to select everything else except the luminosity. This allows you to make adjustments to the other parts of the image until it looks the way you want. To check the effect, you can compare the image before and after these adjustments. And the great thing is that these edits are non-destructive, so you can always go back if needed. When you have many layers, it's a good idea to keep them organized. Instead of clicking on the top layer and then pressing Enter to rename it, you can save time. Just click on the name of the top layer and give it a name, then press the Tab key and it will jump to the next layer in edit mode. Press Tab again and it will move to the next one. If you want to go backward, simply press Shift and Tab. This way, you can start from the top, name each layer, and keep everything well organized. See how quickly I can rename all the layers using just Tab and Numbers. I have an image of a petal on a separate layer and when I enter free transform mode using control plus T and rotate the image, you can see it rotates around its center. But what if you want to rotate it around a fixed point? Let's go back into free transform mode and see what happens when I press the alt key. It adds a point with arrows next to the cursor. Now um, if we hold alt and click once anywhere, it will set a pivot point at that location. So if I click here and then try to rotate, you can see it rotates around that point. You can repeat this by clicking elsewhere while holding Alt, and each time it will set a new pivot point. 
Now let me show you how this can be useful. Suppose we want to create a flower from this petal. If I move the pivot point close to the base of the petal, I can position the petal where I want the next one to be. When I press enter, it appears in that position, but I actually wanted a copy. To achieve this, we use a shortcut, Control plus Alt plus Shift plus T, which duplicates the last transformation. You can repeat this shortcut as many times as needed to create multiple petals. However, you'll notice that as you go, the image becomes more blurry because it loses quality with each transformation. To address this, you can convert the first petal into a smart object. Now, when you use Control plus T and move the pivot point with Alt, followed by Control plus Alt plus Shift plus T to repeat the last transformation, you'll maintain a clear design. I prefer working with smart objects most of the time, except perhaps when doing digital painting. For the last tip, you can hover your mouse over a tool to find more information about it. You'll notice a play button that allows you to watch tutorials about that specific tool. One tool I wish I had when I started is the search feature. Sometimes you might not remember a tool's name, you only recall a word associated with it. By typing that word, you can find all the tools related to it. The best part is that it shows you where to locate the tool, and if you click on it, it selects the tool for you. But there's more to it. You'll also find tutorials and quick actions. For instance, if I click on the Remove Background option, it will remove the background from the image. If you don't like the result, you can click Revert. Let's try another example, like Blur Background. It may not be very visible on this white background, but it's a helpful feature. That's all for today. Please comment below and let me know which tip was your favorite or if you've discovered something new. Have a great day.